But now for the not-so-feel-good. Monsters is a low-budget, post-apocalyptic road movie in which the world has been invaded by aliens. Ex-BBC visual effects creator Gareth Edwards, who wrote, shot and directed the film, spoke to Mark Kermode about his painstaking labour of love. Like me, many horror and sci-fi fans have sat in their bedroom dreaming of making their very own monster movie. But for most of us, such dreams remain as fantastical as the creatures from the pages of Quasimodo's monster magazine. The reason? Money. Or the lack of it. In the past, monster movies made on a low budget featured rubbish creature effects, like Carnosaur, made in the same year as Jurassic Park, but for a fraction of the cost and featuring a plastic dinosaur. Greetings, screen brother. Or how about Toxic Avenger, with its mutated anti-hero played for laughs by a guy in a rubber mask. <laughs> For years, industry insiders have been telling us that advancing technology will soon mean that low-budget science fiction and horror filmmakers will be able to make spectacular special effects pictures without the involvement of a major studio. Well, so far that hasn't really happened, but recently there have been signs that the digital revolution may finally be upon us. Leading the pack is Monsters. Part road movie, part sci-fi adventure, the story takes place in the aftermath of a space probe crash which has allowed aliens to breed on Earth. What is that? Whoa. Journalist Andrew Calder escorts his boss's daughter across the infected zone as they try to reach the safety of the US border. I'm here to meet Gareth Edwards, the creator of Monsters, who's rapidly becoming the David to the Goliath of the Hollywood special effects industry. Not only did he write and direct Monsters, he also shot it himself and, most importantly, he created the special effects himself in his bedroom, up there. Gareth, how are you doing? Oh, how are you? So this is it. This is the spacious studio, or, as it's better known, your bedroom. It's the same thing, really. It's like the commute from work to back home is like about a metre. So, one, two, and you're on set, right? Kind of, yeah. But um, I st sort of do it in my pyjamas most of the time. It's not really like a proper commute. Amazingly, Monsters only cost around half a million pounds, a tiny figure in feature film terms. Gareth shot it himself on a digital camera with hardly any help. He cast a real-life couple in the lead roles, and they filmed in locations they happened to come across in Mexico and the US, with only a rough outline of a script. This is like Mike Lee makes a sci-fi movie. You've got the kind of scribbled improvisational character developments, but that's really quite extraordinary to do that within the context of a complicated CGI film. Well, what's the point of doing a CGI monster film? Like, the whole point of CGI anything is realism, right? Like, that's where you sit and you go to all that pain of doing creatures and lighting it, and it's all about realism. So why would you go to that much trouble for the CGI and then not go to that trouble of realism for the, the rest of the entire movie? You know, like the bit where they, they come into their motel and they flick on the telly and there's like a CNN equivalent of like War of the Worlds type war footage and it just cuts to them and she lies on the bed and the other guy pours a drink of water and they talk about something completely different. It's cold water. I love the fact that something so crazy and weird is so normal to these people. It makes it even more weird. It's fine. This town isn't going to get hit for another two days. No, but isn't that kind of like the weatherman who says it's not going to rain and then all of a sudden it rains? So, the film itself is called Monsters and obviously the monsters have to deliver. How do you conjure a monster? Where does it come from? What's, what's the, the origin of the idea? But whilst we were like figuring out every part of the film, i.e. The, the writing, the filming, everything, I spent the last year just doodling on pieces of paper and I ended up like with loads and loads of sketches. So it came down to about 140 designs in the end. I basically like, printed them all out. Okay, so you've got these original designs, right? So then you go to the computer and... 
there's a few things that have happened in the last few years that have allowed things like this to take place. So essentially, if you wanted to do something organic, computers, don't, they don't do organic things very... Yeah. They're not happy with organic. They like metal, they like boxes and stuff. But now, um, there is software like this where it's more like clay, so it's a lot more like being an artist, you know, in terms of you can just push and pull points just by painting, in a sense. So very quickly you can start creating a sh you know, rough shape of something. So you create the, the monster from the, sort of the digital clay. How do you then make it move and mesh with the live action footage that you've got? The big problem for me was tentacles, and there's no plug-in for tentacles, but there is a plug-in for rope. And then what you do is within that, there's one setting for gravity. So I turned it to zero and notice that the rope suddenly did all this beautiful undulating movement that looked just like a tentacle. So it creates a complicated animation, but it's actually not that complicated to create. It looks cleverer than it is. A lot of it's to do with abusing the software. There's a scene in the film when the van gets flipped by monsters' tent tentacles. Show us on screen how you created that here. The idea was to shoot it like it was really happening. So these guys get in the back of the van, pretend that the, the creature has lifted up the truck. So all I'm really doing is animating the truck upwards. Yep. And, and the rope simulation works itself out around the truck. And once I'm happy with that, then you, you tell the computer to, to treat the tentacles and deform them in the same way that the rope is deformed. Yes. So now the tentacles are kind of sticking to that same movement. And then you render it properly with a proper truck. And you get this kind of thing. But so that's a kind of, you know, it's a Jurassic Park moment, right? You know, truck attacked by huge, great big uh, beastie. But again, done in your front room. Essentially by you working on your own. Yeah, but I'm sure for a lot of shots in a lot of films, it's just one person. Um, I just had a lot to gain from doing it because it, it's my own movie, so mm. I put in that time, but I just, I don't know, I think there's a lot of examples on the internet. If you look, there's a lot of people doing this stuff. I don't think we're that special. It seems to me that what's happened is that the technology has got to the point that if you have the artistry, if you have the invention, if you have the, the mind to make, to tell a story, you know, with certain visual effects and the technological know-how, you can physically do it. That doesn't mean that you are artist enough to do it, but it means that anybody could actually get on with it in a way that they couldn't before. I think there's a lot of people that, um, that are doing this, doing better work than I'm doing on their computers, but they're just probably not making a film around it. Well, Gareth, you're very modest. I mean, it's, you know, it is a really exceptional piece of work. Congratulations. Thank you. No, cheers. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Copy, clear and engage. Take them down. Let's do it. In three, two, one. And Monsters is in cinemas from Friday, December the 3rd.